Welcome to Natural Born Talents. Today's subject, Vampires. Now, of course, most of you know the history of vampires goes back for hundreds, if not thousands of years, and probably first made its mark in mainstream media with the book written by Bram Stoker, Dracula, and later made into the movie Dracula starring Bela Lugosi. Now, most of you probably know that the movie Dracula has nothing to do with the original Romanian rulers, Vlad Dracul, and his second son, who became a Romanian national hero, Vlad Zepes, or Vlad the Impaler, who had such awful and grotesque practices that everyone had assumed he was some sort of vampire. Now, of course, there are going to be people out there who are much more keen on history and the history of vampires. So this video is, again, based on my experience of the kinds of vampires that came into my life, the pretty standard ones. There are other cultures, such as the Philippines, who have the Mamanangal, a rather hideous and disgusting being indeed. The Chinese had the Jiangxi, or Kyonshi in Japanese, the hopping vampire, which there are movies made about them in the kind of Hong Kong Kung Fu style of cinema, which I highly recommend. Even though they're low budget, they're very entertaining. These kinds of vampires, as well as the Berberlang from the Philippines and other Greek, Russian, and other vampires, deserve a separate video. The ones that I experienced are actually much weaker than race. They seem to be somewhat in between race and whites, as described in the previous video, in terms of their strength. They are unlike anything that I've seen in Hollywood movies. They very rarely take physical form. In fact, in The Matrix, they probably would never take physical form with the exception of invading someone else's body, absorbing the souls, and turning them into a vampire themselves. More on that later. Things like driving a stake in the heart of a vampire was actually a practice that goes back centuries and is more likely connected to people who weren't really dead but acquired some illness and people thought they were vampires and so when they woke up they drove a stake in their heart to make sure that they stayed dead. Not reflecting in a mirror would only be if the vampire was in spirit form but exposed itself strong enough to look like it was in physical form and therefore, when you looked in the mirror, you wouldn't see anything because it wouldn't reflect an ortheal being. Herbs of any kind are likely to chase away all kinds of dark spirits. So things like garlic and stuff may actually work. But so could other herbs. Herbs that had a strong enough or pungent enough smell to drive something evil away. As for turning into smoke or a wolf or a bat, these are likely all of myth. However, if the vampire can take ortheal form, or ghost form, or wraith form, it certainly could possess any of those animals, maybe even get control over them. So there may be some truth to that myth as well. Having fangs that come out of their mouth at certain times seems unlikely. And their need to drink blood is really a representation of the need to drain their victim of their energy. The more blood you drain, the weaker their victim becomes. So therefore, the vampire can more easily obtain the spiritual energy or life force from their victim. So the vampire is really more interested in the energy that they absorb. However, vampires are not as strong as race, so they may need to attack their victim in order to make them weak. The vampire also, like the Ikiro and other beings, like to possess people. So when they actually kill their victim, they may attempt to possess their soul, 
by devouring their victim, not just drinking their blood. We have seen some serial killers practice this. I suspect some of them actually may have been possessed by vampires and have become real vampires themselves. Now, vampires do seem to be very shy of sunlight, but so are wraiths. There are some skin conditions where people can't go outside because they're overly sensitive to sunlight. It is possible they may have a vampire within their psyche or soul, and the vampire is trying to turn them into one as well. Because if you're insensitive to light, the vampire has a greater chance of success because you'll be spending more time indoors. The real test to that theory is, of course, if the individual starts practicing some dark behavior. Now, I notice when angels let go of somebody's soul and let the vampire take over, if the vampire is on drugs or something like this, they may go into a frenzy and start biting and killing people. They may develop a taste for blood or even human flesh for sustenance. But again, it's more of the need to drain the victim of their life force, which even pathological murderers will do the same thing for the same reasons. The difference is the murderer gets a high off of it, like a drug addiction. That's why serial killers keep continuing to kill. It's because they're obsessed with the game and the stimulation of somebody dying. That doesn't necessarily mean that all serial killers are vampires. They certainly are not. The kind of vampires that I have seen in my life are more closely resemble the kind of ghoulish, vampirish beings you see in the movie I Am Legend, with Will Smith being the main actor. They do resemble them very closely, but not nearly as strong as they are portrayed in the movie. They're much, much weaker, very sensitive to light. They are somewhat human. They can eat normal foods, but they prefer human blood for the life force that they can take from it. Religious symbols will not chase them off unless there's an angel behind that religious symbol. But simply keeping your house full of bright lights, you can use UV lights as well, getting outdoors as much as possible in the bright sunlight, going to Hawaii and surfing a lot, you probably will never find a vampire on a surfboard, eating healthy food, staying active, would probably keep most vampires at bay. Vampires look for very, very weak people, people who are suffering, dying, or emotionally or psychologically very weak. Some of the more susceptible auras might be the lavender simply because they spend a lot of time indoors and have interests in the dark side of the matrix, but even they are unlikely to succumb to a vampire. You really have to kind of will it, which some people do. So let's take a look at a scenario. You have a family that has, say, a single child, a daughter. She is of one of the more sensitive auras, say a lavender. They live in a place that is not too far from a graveyard, a castle, or they live in the castle themselves, or some other dark part of the neighborhood. Since the child is a lavender, they tend to stay indoors a lot. Lavenders are very sensitive to all kinds of things, and they don't have a very active life. And because they don't go outside very often, they tend to look pale, regardless if there's a vampire present or not. So as time goes on, something from the graveyard, perhaps, or something from the woods, a dark, shadowy being, not in physical form, but in spiritual form, starts to feed off the girl. She starts to get sick. She gets weaker. The vampire starts to drain more and more energy from her. But she won't die, and the disease does not kill her. So the vampire, who's now almost completely possessed her and thoroughly weakened by the vampire, the vampire begins to turn the girl into another vampire. The parents, not heeding the need to have the child have a more active life or more playmates or get out in the sun more, 
she eventually develops a disease that causes her to be very hypersensitive to sunlight. She loses her appetite. She becomes lethargic. She doesn't want to do anything. She doesn't want to socialize with anyone. She starts developing other diseases. And then one day, she just loses it. Takes a knife from the kitchen, stabs her mother to death, and drinks her blood. Father walks in. Shocked, she jumps him and does the same thing. The police arrive and she's gone completely insane. She starts jumping towards the police. The police pull out her weapons and end her life. But as soon as they do that, the body does die. But the vampire that she has now become is just like the wraith. It leaves the body to go haunt someone else. So while the vampire is much weaker than any of these other dark things that I've described, such as the wraith or even the shadow beings, they can be dangerous. But you would truly have to fit the requirements in order for that to happen, which in most cases is unlikely, but not impossible. Well, that's all I have for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, or share. If you have any questions about the vampires that I've encountered, please leave it in the comment section below. If you would like any other videos made on other beings, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, hope to see you in the next video, and be sure to stay safe. is dead, the bats have left the bell tower, the victims have been bled and velvet lines, the black box, the little goose is dead.